this video is about how you can create a relationship, whether you're already in one or you're looking to be in one or you're just gonna fall into one, <laughs> how you can create freedom in that relationship, how you can stay independent, have your freedom, feel like you can be fully self-expressed, feel like you can be who you are without judgment or ridicule and really enjoy your life. But at the same time, have the best of both worlds, be able to be in a partnership where you get companionship, support, sex, friendship, anything else that comes along with it, minus the drama, minus the emotional manipulation, minus all the toxic stuff that is making a lot of men prefer to stay single. And I get it. We've all been in relationships that are not good for us and we get out and we say never again or at least not for a very long time. I've been there, most of us have been there. But unfortunately, I don't want you to stay in a place where you think that it's better to stay single, even though maybe at some point in your life it is better to be single. And that's great and I totally support and get that. But as a long-term thing, I think that we end up really closing ourselves up to connection. And the world is about connection. We feel our best when we're connected to people. And I'm not saying that you even have to get into a super serious romantic relationship. You can actually really connect with great women that still allow you to be your yourself and be free. So let's start. Number one is she'll encourage you to hang out with your friends and family. Now this is really, really important because you charge your battery when you're out with your friends and family, just like she does, just like I do, just like all of us do. And if you don't have the freedom to be able to hang out with your friends and to have your your time away with your friends and with your family because you feel like you're going to be like, like you're trying to avoid conflict, then that's probably someone that you should stay away from. That's a red flag because a woman who knows and supports you to be to have that freedom is going to support you having great relationships and is going to support you being close to your family and your friends because she's going to understand the importance of your social connections she's going to understand that you're a lot better for yourself and for the relationship and ultimately for her when you have that freedom to go and make plans and hang out freely without someone making you feel bad about it or someone texting you every five minutes. So number one, you wanna find a woman who understands the importance of your social connections with your friends and your family and who's supportive of them. Number two is a woman who does not put her emotional baggage on you. Now, this is very different than having someone who's coming and sharing something that's going on in their life. We do that as in partnerships, right? We support in friendships and partnership. We support each other. We listen to each other. We are there for each other. But dumping, emotional dumping is a lot different than just venting about something that's happening. Now, the difference is the person who tends to be an emotional dumper tends to not really do anything about the situation, just continues to complain about it and dump the crap on you. Also, they tend to dump the crap on you without even asking if you're okay to listen to them. So what this can look like is someone doesn't even ask you how you feel about sitting down and having a conversation where you have to listen to them. Now, if the person is self-aware, they're gonna know like you just walked in the door. You need some time to decompress. We all do, but they're not bombarding you with whatever it is that happened or the complaints. They're actually, hey babe, when you get a second, you know, I, I know you wanna relax, but now is it okay if I tell you like I had a kind of a crappy day? Sure. What I know is most men wanna be supportive and wanna be there for you, but they just don't wanna feel like they're your emotional dumping garbage can. Number three, she will have have her own life goals and hobbies. And this is really, really important that she has these goals, that she has these hobbies, that she has her own life because she's going to understand the importance of you having your own life, your own hobbies and your own goals that might not include her. And that's okay and vice versa. So it's really important to have that because I think it really says a lot about the person and shows that the woman is curious, that she wants to always grow and be better and that, that she's fun, that she's interesting, that she has things to talk about, that she's not just waiting around for someone to entertain her or waiting around to do only the superficial stuff, which is fine. We always want a woman who takes care of herself and who looks great and everything, but something beyond the superficial is always important. And hobbies and goals could be anything, but the important part is that she has them and that they don't necessarily include you, although you both can share in each other's hobbies, but it's really important that she has her own. Number four, and this is a saying that my grandma used to always say, she would say, me dices con quien andas y te digo quien eres. And what this basically translates to is, tell me who you hang out with or who you're spending time with and I will tell you who you are. Now they say that we are a combination of the five people that we hang out with the most. Some people dispute this, but we'll just use that, which completely makes sense if you think about it. It's kind of like you are what you eat kind of thing, right? And if this woman that you're dating or that you're interested in dating or that you 
have some sort of an interest in. If you check out her friends, it tells you a lot about her. Number one, does she have friendships that are long? Like, is there longevity to these friendships? Because it says a lot. Also, uh, do they have values that only are about, you know, talking about superficial things and only caring about superficial things? Or do they have deep conversations? Are they looking to be better, to growing together, to making each other better? And really importantly, to calling each other out on the crap, right? Real friends are gonna call you out on your shit. They're not gonna tell you what you wanna hear. Those are not real friends. Real friends are gonna tell you, hey, you know what? You messed up here. And that's okay because we're here to support each other, but you messed up. And they're gonna expect and support and push you to clean up your mess. So this is great because a lot of times men will complain about the friends that a woman has and how they feel that they're, because because the nature that women share everything with their friends, insecurities that they have on, on their own. And but a real friend is gonna support you being in a healthy relationship, meaning they're gonna support the healthy relationship. Or if she does something that's not cool and is not fair and something that was hurtful to you, they're gonna tell them. The real friends are gonna let you know, like, hey, that wasn't cool what you did to him. He doesn't deserve that. He's a great guy. You should go clean your mess up. That's what real friends are do. Friends that are kind of eh, like kind of like kind of crappy friends that some people have, unfortunately, are gonna actually just blow smoke up your ass and tell you that you're right, girl. F him. He's this, he's that. And you wanna stay away from women who have friends like that, okay? You want them to have friends that have the same values as they have, which is to grow, to be a better human being, to be honest, connected, open, fun, curious, okay? Not women that are just talking about shopping or the Kardashians or whatever, which there's nothing wrong with shopping or the Kardashians, I guess. A lot of people do kind of decompress with stuff like that, but if that's the only thing that they're talking about and they're not talking about something more interesting, then that would be a red flag in my opinion. The other important thing that when it comes to friendship is gossip. Gossip is very destructive. It's very negative and unfortunately for some people it's a habit and you want to make sure that you're not with someone that tends to use gossip or really as a pastime or as a habit. Now, what do I mean by that and what is gossip? So having a situation where you're sharing something that happened with someone as a grievance, as a is a, in the moment situation, but that you're going to actually have a conversation with that person directly, okay, or you already did, is not necessarily gossiping, right? That could be healthy venting, that could be trying to look for how to help and how to deal with the situation. But if you have a woman that you can hear her on the phone and she's always talking about that one to the other one and this one to the other one, guess what? That's someone who gossips a lot. And guess what? She will gossip about you. And people who gossip a lot usually tend to be insecure and have a lot of, and we all have insecurities, but I mean like to a higher level, to a higher degree. And instead of using that time to work on themselves, they talk about others. So my suggestion is run for the hills. If you see somebody like that, maybe you can bring it to their attention. Like, Hey, you know what? Gossiping is not cool. Maybe you can spend that time doing something else. If you're already in a relationship with someone who is doing that, they may or may not be open to that, but that is someone that you need to watch out for and someone you shouldn't trust. And that means that she will respect the time she's spending with you and she will be respecting the time that you're investing in her and in, into this relationship. So make sure that you find a woman that understands the concept about how important it is to respect her own time as well as yours. Number six, Avoid a woman who's a complainer. Now, women who are working on themselves, the women who are, you know, supporting you, being out there with your friends and your family and understanding that there's days that you just can't maybe show up for her emotionally the way she'd like you to because you have your own stuff going on is gonna be a woman who is not a complainer. Why? Because they understand again, that it's a waste of time. They also understand that nobody wants to hear that. And they're also because they're a woman who finds solutions and who isn't a victim. It's a woman who's finding ways to solve situations. Of course we can't solve all situations and it's normal to complain about certain things in certain situations. That's normal for all of us. But I'm talking about someone who habitually complains about everything. It could be very annoying. It could be very draining. It could make you feel like everything you do is not good enough. And the reality is it just might be the way they're wired. They might not even realize that they're doing it because as humans, we were able to evolve to where we're at now because we were able to, in our brain, we're programmed to look for what's wrong in order to survive, right? Is that lion going to kill me? Am I going to be the lunch of that, you know, tiger? So we don't live in a world like that anymore where we have to be so hyper vigilant, but our brain is still wired that way. So it may be that she just got into the habit of doing that, of complaining. It doesn't even realize how it 
lands on someone else but maybe you could bring it to her attention if you are already in a relationship or even with someone like hey you know i don't know if you realize this but you're wired to kind of look for what's wrong but it can kind of seem like you're complaining a lot and really you know i don't know if you mean to do that but you know i don't think anybody really wants to hear complaining all the time so again if the person just is a complainer i would say be careful red flag you don't want to spend your beautiful precious time that you have with a person who's always complaining and looking for what's wrong now you're probably wondering where do i find this woman where is she where are they where are these ladies that are super supportive and understanding and fun and adventurous and curious and, and really seem to care about themselves and those around them listen i know i get it it can seem like everybody's really into themselves and and we kind of are living in a world like that, depending on where you live too and the kind of culture you live in. Some countries and cultures are more individualistic, such as the United States, opposed to other countries. So that might be a factor as well. But I think in general, we're living in a world where we're all like in our own little bubble and we have to consciously seek out not becoming that way, not making everything about us. And it's a practice and it's an intention that you have to have for your life. And in order to do that, you have to become self-aware and you have to be self-aware enough to understand that you need to grow as a human being every day be committed to that and growth is not linear you know we have good days and bad days and we seem to be having like the world by the balls and one month and the next month we're like oh my god what's going on but as long as we remain committed to growth that is the key and that's what i wanted to say you have to look for a woman who is committed to growing today and forever and that could look different for different people that could look like seminars self-help books meditation different workshops that they can be a part of talk therapy maybe they see a psychiatrist it can look different for different people in different times in their life as well the point is that you find someone who's committed and of course if you want to find someone who checks all these boxes you have to make sure that you are also that person so you also have to be committed to growth which is how you can find these women these women are going to be in places where you see that where you could actually join a class join a seminar join some sort of retreat these kind of things where you find people that are in alignment with what it is that you're trying to create for your life and i know that can seem like daunting right because like you're like okay well i'm not going to go to a seminar every day so so ask people when you meet women if you're out on a date or whatever have the conversation hey how do you how do you like do you work do you believe in personal development like what do you think about personal development have you done any cool things maybe share something that you've done and really get to see what you can learn about the person because it says a lot. Now, it also, what it does is it brings you to this like common human ground now that you're talking in this like space versus this like you're over here, she's over here and you're really not getting to know each other. It's like more superficial. So you go below the superficial level when you get to talk about these things and you really get to, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe she's done something really cool that you didn't know about and it's something that you can learn about or vice versa. You can suggest something that maybe she wasn't aware of or she didn't know existed. And the truth is like there are a few people out there that maybe have never done any work on themselves but they're open to it and they're curious and they check all the other boxes because maybe naturally that's just the personality that they have but you can actually put it out there like hey like let's go do this together if you're already in a relationship with someone or you can chat with someone and then suddenly now you're talking about real things you're talking about you're really getting to know the person which builds connection and even if you don't connect necessarily romantically with that particular person that person has friends they have sisters and cousins and all kinds of people that you could possibly meet co-workers but when you start getting committed to working on yourself guess what those vibrations of people you start to pick them up and then the people that are working on themselves interestingly enough start picking up on your vibe vibe right that's why we say like oh i really like that person's vibe like i really liked her vibe or his vibe because we do feel a different vibration when we're around people that make us want to be better that make us feel peaceful that make us feel good about who we are that don't make us feel like we're being judged unfortunately the world wasn't created for us to be just in our authentic self just out in the open we have to kind of dig to find those people and we definitely have to go inwards to find that in ourselves another great thing that you get when you meet a woman who is working on herself she'll know how to apologize and it means like a real apology not something like this oh i'm sorry that i did this but it's because you all right so there are no ands and buts after an apology. An apology is just an apology. And people who are working on themselves actively, and in this case, this women, will be able to apologize and clean up their mess. They'll realize like, hey, I made a mistake, whether it's because they 
can see it and they self-correct or because one of their great friends that we were talking about or family members will say, hey, you know what? That wasn't cool. You need to go clean that mess up. And they will do it. And they will do it because they understand the importance of cleaning off a, like cleaning off the table before you can continue. Another great thing, number three, that comes with someone who is also actively working on herself is that you'll find someone who knows how to let things go. And unfortunately, all of us have been there before. It's hard sometimes to let certain things go and we don't realize that it really affects us a lot. But in terms of a relationship, if we don't know how to like have a conversation, clean up the situation, move on and leave it in the past, it just makes for the future is just a mess. And I really learned this. It was a really great analogy that Tony Robbins gave once at one of his events that I attended where he said, you know, people are like sticky notes, right? We, we Not the people, but like the things that they did wrong are like sticky notes. And eventually we don't see the person anymore because every time that we, they do something wrong, we put a sticky note on them. And then soon enough, they're just full of sticky notes all over and we don't even see the person anymore. We just see all the things that they have done wrong. And I'm not saying that that means that when someone does something that's not right or something that's hurtful or anything that you don't address it and you don't work through it if they need to apologize that that you know they don't apologize what i'm saying is that if we continue to hold on to old grudges and don't learn how to let things go because that is also a skill just like learning how to apologize properly learning how to communicate properly all of those are skills and if the person is working on themselves usually those type of skills will be addressed and learning how to let things go is so key just even for themselves for their own inner peace and if they're sharing space and time with you it is actually really great for your relationship as well in all relationships learning how to let things go is key and that's like another great thing when you are with a woman who is aware of that so someone who's committed that says yeah you know what i'm not perfect i'm still a work in progress which is we all are, <laughs> is it probably a person that you should give it a shot? Like this might be a person who's fun, who's cool, who's open-minded, who is curious, who's not judgmental because they've done some inner work and they're not just looking at the outside of a person because they know going inward, like there's no hiding. I always recommend that you find a woman who is committed to her personal growth, not just in the interim, but forever, that understands that this is a journey, that the point is to grow, that they don't know everything, and usually those people in general tend to be people who are going to receive you, embrace you without judgment, but also hold you accountable for being the best version of yourself and really help you to get to where you want to go in terms of your goals and what you want to get out of this beautiful life in this very short time that we have on this earth.